dudes and dudettes. How are you guys? This is Chazzy and welcome back to Cinema Chazzy, the segment on this channel where I review the movies that I watch over the eons, whether they're old or new or modern or classic. I think some of those words are synonyms. I don't know why I repeated them. It kind of sounded a little redundant now, you know? Uh, but anyway, continuing my little trend of recording soccer-related videos here for my channel. You know, I've been playing a lot of FIFA 22 and doing some videos about athletes in the mixer, you know? So I'm also, I'm also reviewing movies and TV shows related to the sport. I know the first of which was this one here, called Goal, Now the Dream Begins. I was going to originally review the sequels to it, but it's been a long time since I saw those movies in the third one. I don't even know where I can find it to stream, you know? It's just, a, I figured, you know what, let's just do the first one because it was the only one that was actually of a lot of real essence, you know? The sequels just kind of, they didn't really follow, they followed the same formula, but they kind of sucked, you know? So I'm going to be wiping that slate clean and reviewing something completely new, a little bit more lighthearted and kid-friendly, you know? A joint collaboration between Australia and the United States back of the net. That's what I'm going to be talking about today. It's a very cheeky little kids movie, you know, that can be watched by adults. It's not like completely infantile, but it, it was released back in 2019 and the synopsis is actually very, um, very wholesome, you know. It's about a girl named Corey who's a science geek, a nerd, you know, and she is looking forward to spending her semester on the high seas on a ship, you know, doing science research, you know, and studying animals and marine biology, this and that. However, at the last minute, there is a bit of a mix up and she actually gets on the wrong bus and goes to a soccer academy instead. And it's kind of funny because a soccer academy or any sports related academy is not the kind of place where you would, where you would expect to find a science geek, you know, so it's it's really funny how the movie plays out with this story. You know, the synopsis itself and just really draws a lot of attention because normally, you know, nerds and geeks aren't very, you know, athletically gifted, you know. So I thought the idea was really nice and very novel, you know. And it was filmed actually on site in Australia. So what you see is actually what was really, uh, it was really, uh, how can I say, very authentic, you know. Now, uh, I actually do believe that it's called the Herald Soccer Academy. That's what it's, uh, it's called, you know. So at first, she's very hesitant, you know. She's completely out of, like a, a literal fish out of water. No pun intended, well, pun intended because, you know, marine biology, this and that, you know. But, you know, seeing somebody who excels so well in science, you know, gets top grades in the classroom, suddenly having to go to a place where she has to perform physically, you know, not being the biggest fan of physical education, and slowly starting to build friendships, you know, getting along with the people around her and having a few rivals as well you know it's really nice how the movie works out and I actually thought it was really cool it was actually produced by no sorry the production company is the Steve Jagger company and it was distributed by Umbrella Entertainment you know very very entertaining you know it stars uh, Sophia Wiley you know as Corey you know in the main role I think that the cast of characters was actually very well rounded you know the kids actually did act pretty well the movie was very wholesome and sweet you know I mean to, to at 86 minutes long it's not exactly like a it's not like one of those two hour long Oscar worthy programs like Gridiron Gang or maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, Remember the Titans or something, you know, anything like that, Invincible with Mark Wahlberg, you know, and it is soccer, which is known as football in Europe, but I'm going to call it soccer because I speak American English, you know, so we've been over this already in a few other previous videos, but so... I actually did think the movie was very, very, uh, it's not exactly anything original, the idea isn't exactly novel, but it is just novel enough to work, you know, in that aspect there. And as I get into more of the plot details and the character elements, let's take a look at a clip here from the movie first. In 72 hours, I'm going to be on one of the most advanced research vessels in existence, studying fluid dynamics and ocean waves. You get to Sydney at 10 a.m. You sure you're okay? Me? Mm -hmm. I'm better than okay. Oh! oh. Doing okay! Alrighty, so hopefully no copyright infringement problems that I'm going to face here using that clip there, you know. But anyway, so now, like how I said, right, the story begins with Corey expressing desire to go do some oceanic research on like a ship, you know. I don't believe it's a yacht. I think it was just like a, it just says here that she was going to join the sea science program. So maybe not a yacht, not a fancy boat, but she was going to go on the high seas, you know. Her parents support that. They let her go, you know, and she gets all excited. She packs. But as we see very soon, she gets on the wrong bus and ends up at the soccer academy instead, you know. Now, she tries to contact the person in charge of the C program so she can try to, you know, change it and try to escape, you know. Unfortunately, the boat would have already left by the time she gets there. So one thing leads to another. and She's actually forced to stay at the soccer academy, much to her chagrin, you know. But then immediately she meets this handsome boy called Oliver, who's one of the best 
best players in the academy, you know, like a real big hunk of a fellow, which unfortunately attracts the jealousy of Edie, you know, I do believe that's how you pronounce her name, I, I think it was Edie, who we as the viewers are led to believe there is some kind of romance there, there's like some kind of romantic tension, but they're actually, they've actually just been friends since they were kids, you know, but of course she gets really jealous of him, but anyway, so... And then Corey, you know, the first day of camp, she meets other people and she does make friends because she gets new roommates, you know, she goes to different lessons and even though she excels in science and other experiments, she does fail miserably at soccer, you know, but then, you know, uh, she does try to make friends, you know, and uh, her little posse, you know, the, the girls who are with her and as her roommates, you know, they have their uh, a little team of their own, which is called the WOTB, the worst of the best, you know, which is really freaking sad, have never won a, a little league championship or youth thing or whatever the hell they play, you know, never even came close don't score any goals everybody sucks in training you know so but there is the national soccer competition that's going to be played against you know uh, between like members of the school you know the academy so they're tr they're training hard they have to really win you know this and that so then Corey and Oliver become closer as Edie gets even more pissed and tries to sabotage her there's like this little this little science experiment where she tries to light up a pickle and, like that glows you know but then she sabotages that this and that so yes then Corey feels a little depressed you know the movie goes on but we start to see that she gives a soccer a little bit more research you know she tries to implement science into soccer and comes up with these crazy aerodynamic formulas that actually allow her to perform better in the sport and her friends as well you know so you know her friends cheer her up and they support her this and that and then later on you know uh the coach actually re refuses to sponsor the wotb the next year because of, you know uh rather no she would only support them if they have good grades you know better results in school so of course everybody is devastated because they know how hard it is for them to win any matches you know but rather i do believe that uh it's not the results in the school sorry it's not coach carter uh they're going to they, they need better results as a team in soccer so they start to play a little better and that's when Corey starts to apply her knowledge of science into their mode of training you know so she combines the theory of physics you know like basically how you can kick the ball a certain way to make it go in a certain direction with a certain amount of force and the wind and this a bunch of science you know mumbo jumbo you know smart people talk you know that allows her and her friends to perform better they apply to their training and they slowly start to climb the ranks you know so you know uh, when they start training they actually start improving quite a lot and actually are able to kick the ball now you know so on the day of the competition you know uh, the uh, the WOTB the, the team starts to beat a lot of other teams on their way to the finals you know but the opponent in the final is actually the elite team of the, the, the Herald Soccer Academy which involves Edie you know who unfortunately decides to sabotage by by locking Corey in, a, in the bathroom you know Oliver eventually comes to the rescue and lets her out and they play almost because they were about to forfeit you know so uh, also actually that's not what happened uh, one of the members got hurt and then Corey had to substitute her you know so that's what happened but she got locked in the bathroom then you know uh, she then got out of it okay well the events that I just described happened in a certain order maybe I got them mixed up you know but of course she comes back and eventually she does score in the last minute and they win you know they win the competition so they can continue to get sponsored by the coach and then after that you know uh, in, uh, Edie actually decides to become friends with Corey, you know, they reconcile, you know, this and that, because we do find out that Edie is actually kind of like shunned by her parents, you know, She's, she has rich parents who are never there for her, the classic, I'm rich but I'm miserable because my parents don't give me any attention thing, you know, so we can sympathize with her as Corey tries to do it herself, so they do become friends, they start training together and stuff, you know, she gives her science lessons, this and that, so yes, then everybody is there, you know, freaking uh, cheering and jumping because they won, everybody's friends, now all of that really sappy mumbo jumbo at the end of these kids uh, sports movies you know before i continue let's get on to uh, i actually thought that the ending was very yada yada very corny and cheesy but hey that's how you finish a kids movie let's take a look at another clip here before i continue there has to be a way you're gonna need to let that go but i don't play soccer correction you didn't play soccer i'll see you on the field Hey, Mom and Dad, they put me on a soccer team. Why don't you make the most of it? Listen up a little. That's the spirit! How's the soccer camp treating you? Not quite so great. <laughs> Now, as is the case with most, you know, uh, teen coming of age, you know, uh, 
comedic movies, you know, this one had a lot of very, you know, um, a lot of predictable tropes and cliches, like you already knew what was going to happen, you know, just on the synopsis alone, you could kind of understand what was to come, you know, and the, the, the characters were very likable, the actors did bring a lot of charming, you know, energy to the table, you know, the dexterity wasn't lost on me, I'll give it that, you know, and it seems like in general, you know, sources like Rotten Tomatoes actually gave the movie kind of like a fair rating, you know, and there was a little bit of, you know, uh, criticism directed towards the plot and some of the characters, but, you know, I mean, the messages are very positive, you know, we're talking about highlighting the importance of friendship and teamwork, you know, and what you can accomplish when you work together with other people around you, so, because soccer is a team sport, so, in my opinion, this was the perfect sport to choose for this movie, you know, to, to use it as the plot device, because if it was something like like basketball you know or even like uh, I don't know American football or something else it wouldn't have the same feel because soccer is much much more team driven you know at least in my opinion because you have 11 players on each side at a given moment you know and each one has a specific function each one does something different that ultimately helps to achieve the goal of scoring a goal you know putting that ball in the back of the net, row credits, you know? So I think that it was a very good way to illustrate teamwork, you know, and how the uh, each character had their own little quirks. And there there was this one girl, you know, this Asian girl who was also one of the roommates who had this character trait of, of never taking off or never washing her socks, you know, because they gave her good luck or something, you know? But hey, they do play around with this, you know, there are a few moments of comic relief, you know, there are a few quirky moments with Corey, you know, trying to, to, to kind of inject science into the sport, you know, so there are moments that I actually thought were very lukewarm and wholesome, you know, and of course, the, the, the conflicts are few and very far between, you know, they're not very, you know, like there is like a, a, an attempt at a romantic subplot with Corey and Oliver, you know, but it doesn't work out for some reason, uh, just, she doesn't want to lose focus or something, you know, and then Edie gets jealous you know there's a whole bunch of stuff that happens you know so it was enlightened you know uh, it was said to be an unremarkable piece of preteen fluff, you know, that was enlightened by entertaining performances, you know, that's actually what is uh, from Rotten Tomatoes, you know, but honestly, dude, like, uh, sometimes I'll tell you what Rotten Tomatoes says here, just to give you an idea of the ratings, but I honestly don't really base myself too much off on that, you know, but there are a few other things like, uh, you know, there were, uh, there is the Australian Council on Children in the Media, you know, which called the film a sweet Australian children's film, which shows that anybody can see if they were together, like I myself said, you know, so, now, basically, the final message, you know, about working hard in a group to achieve one collective goal, you know, each person working individually to achieve something, you know, as a group, to me, was very, very cool, you know, and even somebody like Corey, you know, the character who was not familiar at all with sports and soccer, you know, even she was able to slowly rise up, you know, and be a useful player on the team. So, I mean, if you've ever gone through something like this in life, you know, harkens back to your middle school and high school days where you were just trying to fit in, you know, everybody can relate it is at the end of the day a very relatable movie you know so I can't just completely uh, ignore the, uh, uh, the the negative aspects, you know. So now a few other things as well here. There was even a newspaper that said this, and I quote: "That the script gets much better treatment than it deserves, thanks to the spirited exuberance of a cast who seem delighted to be doing what they're doing." Which is true. You could tell that the kids were really having a lot of fun acting, you know. Like that nobody acted particularly badly, you know. Even like the adult characters provided some comic relief, you know. So I thought that was really nice. So yes. Uh, featuring a protagonist that kind of, you know, uh, who operates life with the textbook formula and she's kind of like stuck in a film that's chosen. Let me read directly from that. The textbook is not the same. Okay, no, that's just stupid. So yes, uh, showing the transition, the character development of Corey, you know, going from nerd to athlete, you know, I thought was really nice, you know. The movie ultimately fell short in a few other aspects, you know. I didn't particularly like the pacing too much and some of, some of the, the acting seemed to be a little exaggerated and the plot points were very rushed and too predictable, you know. And it almost felt too wholesome, you know, at some moments here, you know. Know? So this movie is not going to get a very high rating. I can already give you that, you know, different than Rotten Tomatoes, which just for the hell of it, let me read, you know, uh, Rotten Tomatoes reported that 50% of six reviews of the film were positive with an average rating of 5.8 out of 10, you know, but as you guys will see at the end, my rating is actually not that far from that. Let's take a look at another clip here before that. I'm not mad. I don't understand how you can be friends with Edie. She's just mean. I know she can be hard to get along with. I don't know if I can trust you. I'm just so sick of the way she acts all the time. Oh, is this your back? Oops. 
I'm just not putting up with it anymore. Thanks. Unsurprisingly, because it is a movie set in Australia, the vast majority of filming took place in Australia. You know, I'll buy it briefly in Los Angeles because that's where Corey is from, you know, so it does start in the US and then the vast majority of it takes place over in Australia, you know, places like Bombo Core, you know, which is a very nice place, you know, it looks really nice from afar, but when you get close, there might be a few dangerous animals there, you know, but also Wulugong, I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's the place where there's like a lighthouse, you know, so in and around that place there so uh, also Kiyama which also included the innovation campus you know and uh, there there was the, the company itself behind the movie worked with the local council and destination Wollong to ensure the availability of the filming site so they it was pretty much filmed like near and around the same air general areas you know a few nighttime scenes at a beach there were some daytime scenes also when they were training at a beach you know I would never go to any beach in Australia bro we're talking great white sharks and jellyfish and other things like snakes in the sand you know I I'm out of there man I'm not I would never even get close you know as an actor I would be so scared to film in Australia like holy crap visual effects there were quite a few techniques used during production you know uh, there was actually a uh, stylus animation and some CG elements that were provided in the film to enhance the story although I personally can't remember anything um, it's been a while since I've seen it so I can't remember any CGI effects you know unless maybe I'm just I cannot remember a single goddamn CGI effect, but anyway, so there were visual effects in the film that were actually better than what the team had expected, although I personally can't remember Jack Tibbly squat, you know, I mean, what, did somebody do a power up or something, you know, was it like that, that Japanese anime about soccer superstars, I don't remember, but in general, you know, the moral messages behind the movie of friendship and teamwork and, you know, acceptance, you know, the overlying themes were not lost on me, you know, I saw what it was trying to accomplish, but ultimately, it just ended up up being just a little bit too infantile for me even though I am a fan of soccer not a big fan of Australia though so the plot elements were a little threadbare in my opinion so this movie ultimately in my opinion gets a 6 out of 10 you know that is my final rating for this one you know and one of the lowest ratings I've given a movie in a long time you know it's not that I didn't like it it's just that after I finished watching it I thought man I could have watched something else <laughs> could have probably spent my time this uh, hour and a half or so watching something else but I mean hey that explains why I'm so unenthusiastic you know I'm not very happy you know to talk about this movie here but I'm, I'm trying to expand more and review stuff that I don't necessarily always like so maybe that's the thing you know but if you are curious about it, you know if you want to watch a nice little wholesome coming of age tale about soccer in Australia and a few moments of bullying here and there it's definitely right up your alley I saw it on Netflix maybe it's still there you know but it's not a Netflix original by the way but it was there streaming but if it's not just watch it somewhere else you know and and that's pretty much it guys you know very short review wow one of the shortest ones in a while if you happen to like it though please go ahead and give this video a like and also subscribe to my channel because i release videos every single day and while you're at it hit the notification bell as well so you can know exactly what time i upload and that's it for today guys this is chazzy signing out for now and as always i will see you guys in the next video roll the outro screen with a few more movies for you guys to click on and watch are you having fun for the first time, I think I might be. This is when all of our hard work comes together and we show everyone that we are champions. One, two, three! Oh!